Hello and welcome to CS230. This is Lecture 8 and Lesson 4. And in this lesson I wanted to revisit the HTTP server that we looked at in class on Thursday and, and look and go into it a little bit more detail because we need to start now understanding a little bit more about servers as such. And I'll use this as an example to introduce some of the new concepts. So with um, this particular approach, we often refer to it and we see it see it if we if we if we look online as a Node.js HTTP server without a framework. Because in, you know reality is that we, we use frameworks and these are system frameworks that help us to do and um and build more interesting services. And uh, one that we'll be using a little bit later will be will be express. But um that's a little bit away yet. Okay, so we're we're actually interested in a fairly standard example that's presented on MDN, um, and also you see repeat, replaced a better version on Stack Overflow, and I've given you the links that you can check through. They're slightly different, but we start with the MDN version, so it's not too different from sort of things that we did previously. Um, it has this requiring the HTTP for the web server stuff, all the networking. FS is the file system, and the path allows us to be able to parse the path that's passed when we make a, a request to say localhost slash whatever the file name is. Okay, and then um, so this just creates a server, has its request and response, and then we're just logging, you know, what the request URL was here. Okay, so that's the start, and then we're actually trying to extract the file name that we're trying to access um, from the URL. And if it isn't provided, in other words here, if it's, a, if it's uh, this, you know, then we actually replace it to be um, index.html, which is the file we would look and send. Okay, so this is, the th this is the stuff. So what makes this server slightly different from this, the earlier servers have this whole list of something called MIME types. And really what we want to be able to do with the server is the server needs to be able to handle and um, look for the file and send the file back to the server. But the, the person who's requesting it or the, the client, the browser, a curl or some whatever um, application you're using, it will want lots and lots of lots of, of different document types. It might want HTML files, it might want JavaScript files, CSS files, JSON files, image files, SVG images, WAVs, MP4s, all this kind of stuff. It might want all of that. And so we need to be able to say to this to the client, I am sending you this this file now. Okay. And then regardless of what they've requested, you, you need to include this information in order to tell them about the content type that's being returned. Now we saw that when we looked at HTTP um, yesterday on Thursday's lecture, but it may have, you may have missed it, okay? So we prepend, if you like, um, what kind of information we're sending as part of the HTML headers that's exchanged between the client and the server. And yesterday, you know, we, we said, yeah, look, we're sending you back to 200 error code, everything is okay. Um, and sending you this document, and we saw the HTML coming across, and then we saw just in front of it, we saw the content type was text slash HTML. So what is that? So, well, actually, I mentioned the word MIME in class, and that, that stands for, MIME stands for Multipurpose Internet Mail Extension. So, um, so it's sometimes referred to, it's more modernly referred to as a media type now, um, or MIME, and it's a standard that indicates the nature and the format of a document, a file, or some assortment of bytes. And it's defined in a, and standardized in the Internet Engineering Task Force specification RFC 6838. I just want you to know it exists, you don't have to remember this stuff, okay? So the simplest mind type consists of a type and a subtype. We saw one text slash HTML. And they're just strings. They're concatenated with a slash, there's no spaces, um, and uh, it's a way of identifying files on the internet according to their nature and format. So if we use the content type header in a HTTP response, the browser can open the file with the appropriate extension or plugin to handle the file that's downloaded. So if we send HTML, sorry, text.html as the content, then in the browser knows, oh, I have a processor and I can handle that. If you send it an image and say, the, tell it the kind of image, so well, I can display that image. And I know what to do with it. If you send it a web, it'll start playing the music or something based on its player or plugin. So there's two ways to figure out what the mind type is, okay, of the file. You look at its extension and hope that that's accurate, or you look at the contents and then guess based on that. If a file has no extension, then the second option is the only one available to you. So remember, a mind type should be a description of the content of the file. And if you change the extension of the file and not the format, then the server sends it off to a, to a browser. The browser will try to interpret the contents based on the mind type provided via the headers, you know, 
and will likely fail. So in other words, if I have a HTML document and I rename it from myfile.html to myfile.jpg, pretending it's an image, I try to send it to, to the, this, the client via my web server, the web server will say that it's an image, and then the, the browser will look at it and say, well, I'm going to try to display this as an image, and it won't. You'll get a, you'll get a, broken, a broken kind of link. Okay. So you can also have optional parameters on the mind type. And we saw that again yesterday when we looked at something like text slash HTML and we said the car set UTF-8 was used. And I explained that in class. So that's the only other time you would see that. So the M stands for multi-part, okay? And they're a kind of category of document that's broken into pieces, um, often with different mind types. So the, you'll see this in mail. So if you have a mail, um, mail uses up mime as well, or media types. So if you have a mail and you embed a, a document in the mail, then it's sending text and it's also embedding. It's, so there'll be two kinds of things, uh, two two mime types required, you know. And then, and the mail the mail mail systems will merge it all together and make it work. Okay. For our module, okay, CS230, we'll be looking at data, form handle data from clients sending it to servers. And sometimes the form will be generated by the server first, and then it's filled in, and then it's responded to, and so forth. So everything will be written in HTML, but we will see something like the multi-part form data mind type a little bit later, okay? And we'll see that with post requests, um, uh, instead of, we saw get requests where we were looking at something, but we wanted to send data to a server back and forth. But you know, we, we'll come across mind types a little bit later again, so I just wanted to flag them for you, okay? so. Let's get back to our piece of software. So here we see what's happening is that we're using part one, approach one to generate the mime. So our server is going to be asked to give a particular file, then it's going to have the mime type, and it's going to generate a mime type based on the extension of the file. Then it uh, also appends this application octet. It's an application octet slash sorry, octet string, and that basically um, is the standard way for encoding data for binary across the um, across the, the internet. It's kind of textual. Then what we do is we try to open the file. If there's an error, um, then it generates this uh, error code, which tells us that the file doesn't exist or the directory doesn't exist, some file handling thing. And we do it this way rather than looking to see if a file exists and advance it because, because we're using this read file asynchronous notation here. And um, this is what happens. We get provided with an error object that we can analyze. We can't use the throw in here because it's not, um, it's not synchronous. Okay. Then we read the file, um, 404.html, and we write that to the screen if there's a problem. Otherwise, if there's a bigger issue, we just write this header. Otherwise, we just say error code 200. In other words, everything is fine. And we just send the content, which is the file that we've read. We listen on this one, we'll listen on 8125. And if you look at the Stack Overflow example, it actually shows you a way of actually um, doing this with uh, with uh, specifying a port that you want to run on. So look, I have this written um, in, in my browser, demo six. Let's run it and see it happening. Okay. So now we have the server running at this port here, and we'll use our Firefox in order to be able to go and look and search. Okay, and I'm looking for an image. Doesn't exist um, at all. Uh, let's just look here. Nothing exists. Let's look for a file that doesn't exist. Um, uh, doesn't exist. So because it's looking to include a f uh, the 404 file, and we didn't actually include it, so let's shut down the server here. Shut down the server, and let's make a file for 404. I'll go copy it. I have it in my document for you. Here's my 404.html file. Let's go back to my server. I'll make it. Now I've created that file. Now we'll restart the server. Running again. Let's go back. Let's look for our um, Firefox. Look for my picture called teletubbies.jpg. It doesn't exist. And the file does not exist, which is what we wanted. So now it's working properly and giving us our, our, um, our code. Let's look at the file. Let's um, shut down the server again. I have a a sample 
JPG here, so we CP to Okay, so we now have a Teletubbies file, and so we start the server again. And this time we look for, and we get our Teletubbies. Okay, so it looks nice, it works fine, and it's really, really useful. Okay, so we looked at a very similar server. We can show how we can do file handling. We can send data back and forth. We can send files based on MIME types, and it's... Uh, really really nice and it's how the web works but we'll be doing all this again later using a javascript framework on the back end for node and it's called express but for now that's pretty much everything you need thanks very much for watching